Welcome to the Image and Wire show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Image and Wire. And we have a great episode for you all today. We have Maya Khalife from Arteris. Uh, Maya is the director of product management there, and she has a long history both on the academic and commercial side of imaging and AI, uh, which means she's seen a lot and has a lot to share. And I can't wait to share with you. So uh, Maya, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks, uh, Jake, Jake, for having me. Um, it's a reference in our domain, so I'm really happy to be part of the show. <laughs> Good. Um, it's great to have you here. Uh, maybe just to start us off, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and, and what you do at Arteris. Sure. Um, so I started uh, by my, my history with medical imaging started with my biomedical engineering degree. Where, and after that, I, I also decided to pursue a PhD in MR physics, where I combined imaging, was flow MRI at the time with um, mathematical modeling. And after that, I really, I mean, imaging has always been so interesting for me. Uh, so I, I worked a bit more uh, on, on uh, combining machine learning with imaging techniques to come up with methods to um, create, create um, new, clinical value, deliver a clinical value to, to radiologists or, or even nuclear medicine as well. And that's how I also got to Arteris. Uh, what brought me to Arteris was really combining like innovation to with uh, tangible clinical products that are used daily um, and that uh, are providing uh, value, uh, either like automating some tasks or, or uh, increasing the efficiency, empowering radiologists to do their job better. And uh, yeah, that's how I started here. Um, started with more on machine learning product management and, and then moved more to the clinical applications product management. So building out the whole clinical uh, application, um, like thinking about it con from conception to commercialization. Yeah. I feel like you're not the only person at artist with a PhD in related to flow uh, technology. Is that, that's, that's, that's actually, yeah, that's actually how they found me in the beginning, how I, how I, I heard of Arteris. Uh, and I was like, oh, we, we you work in flow, MRI, I have expertise in flow MRI. Well, that's not the, the main reason, like the, my job description, description didn't say flow, but that's actually how we, we connected on LinkedIn in the beginning, yeah. How interesting. I can only <laughs> imagine the like small talk that a couple of uh, flow experts might have at the water cooler or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> um, so so I, I noticed that you've, uh, you're just wrapping up your first four years there, which is, you know, a lifetime in AI, really, uh, both in terms of what's happened on technology and usage and awareness and opinions and all of those other things. And we've kind of seen from the opinion perspective, we've seen um, kind of some peaks and valleys, right? Um, when you look back on that, uh, you know, think about the valleys, like areas where there might be perceived challenges, where those challenges really do exist, and then areas maybe where, yeah, it really is delivering clinical value today. What are kind of some examples on, on both sides of that? I've been here for a while, and I, I think we all learned a lot uh, through this through this, through this journey. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of hype on AI, a lot of AI algorithm being built for radiologists uh, without really coming from the radiologists. So uh, we learned a lot. Uh, we learned that AI is not a product on its own. Uh, it's not something that you can sell, um, especially if it wasn't developed uh, with a radiologist in mind. I mean, if, if you're developing AI for a radiologist, um, a lot of those initial AI were de designed or de by researchers or engineers. And, and that without a good understanding of the radiology workflow. So one of the main learning was that uh, if, you want, if you want to deliver a real clinical value, you shouldn't only put AI as an end goal, but use AI within a, a, a thought through workflow um, for, a, for a radiologist. Um, some of the 
I mean, we, we've seen some success stories around like triage algorithms. Uh, so, so because they're, they're, uh, they're delivering, um, kind of uh, removing some burden out of, uh, out of the, the uh, removing some burden out of the, the radiologist daily, uh, daily work, work. And we know that radiologists are asked to read more and more images with less and less time. And also we have the shortage, we know that there's a shortage in radiologists, there's radiologists burn, burnout. Um, so like having triage algorithms saying like, focus on these, specifically, we, we noticed that uh, one of our, our successful products in Europe is around ED imaging. And we know like there's a high volume of x-rays happen, happening there. And journals don't really like reading those because they're not that interesting. And they like to focus on more complicated cases like brain images or, or CT images. Uh, and Hello? and having, having a, an AI algorithm just like, asking them to focus on, on the positive cases or the doubtful cases and, and, and removing some of the negative ones with high accuracy is, 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 is that a fire alarm? No. <laughs> I'm not sure. So you were talking about uh, basically the, you know, some of the, th the, the learnings along the way in terms of AI not being a product, but then when you put it into the right clinical use case, um, you know, it really can. And actually, just yesterday, we'll probably be launching this this video in a week or two. But uh, just yesterday, I covered a, a new addition to your um, your neuro AI platform. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe you can tell me a little bit about that platform, and then um, kind of how that that feeds into areas where you can do, deliver clinical value. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, um, neuro. I mean, we, we we started focusing on neuroradiology because it's brain images is constitute up to fifty percent of the radiology volume, uh, and uh, radiologists are reading on a daily basis uh, multiple uh, brain images with multiple modalities, so including CT and MR, and they're looking for multiple pathologies, uh, and they're looking for help in, in automating those different uh, workflows or different different uh, reading. Uh, and, um, and you can find a lot of point solution that and that, that are delivering some values in those areas where like, in, like automated quantification, automated detection of some lesions, um, longitudinal analysis, like when you want to, to, to uh, track down lesions over time. And there's a lot of these, or like uh, stroke detections for that, that actually is help, like is very important because you want to decrease the time between detecting a stroke and, and delivering a treatment to the patient. Um, so today they have they have these multiple solutions that are available, but each are like need to be deployed separately and each need the IT resources separately because you want to deploy them separately. And, and having all them um, uh, consolidated or aggregated in a single platform, uh, was was actually an evidence to us and to the radiologists uh, that actually were very welcoming to that idea. And uh, and other is because of the ability of the platform of integrating multiple AI and and building smart workflows uh, that are seamlessly integrated within their ecosystem uh, that gave us a, a good advantage over there. Um, and, um, so today we can like the 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 main idea behind the neuro AI platform is to deliver a single patient report with like five different producers. So today we have five different algorithm producers that can be all integrated within a single report, a uh, single UI with a broad range of, of modules and pathology, pathologies. Um, and of course, always the focus always being on automating, increasing efficiency, empowering the radiologist uh, to do a better work. So if you're a, a neuroradiologist and you're, you're on your shift and you have the the artist neuro AI platform in front of you. Obviously, you have like a diverse set of uh, studies that are coming through. How you know? How does it? How's that? Um, you know, during the workday workflow work. Yeah. Um, so depending on the different studies, we also have a smart way of filtering uh, and routing the studies to the right algorithms. Uh, so if you're reading, uh, if you're reading a CT perfusion, then you have the the, the automated. Uh, uh, quantification and segmentation on the CT perfusion with the with the specific reporting. If you if you're reading uh, a neurodegenerative uh, uh, image of a, a neurodegenerative image of a neurodegenerative patient or a multiple sclerosis patient, and you're looking for specific white matter lesions, then you have that algorithm 
running and, and generating the, the required result and the required report. So it's 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 it works seamlessly for the for the radiologists really. Like it, it we 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 do that in the background. We select the right algorithm for the right image and deliver um, the the result to, to them. So then they would have these, um, I guess, like ready to review reports that would just be prepared for them. And when they sat down, they would kind of just go through the reports. Yeah, so the, it could be it could be uh, different different levels of, of reviewing. Either they they might want to review the the images first and the the segmentation done on the image, and that's also the flexibility of artists where we have our own reviewer. We can review the AI results because that's also a request. Uh, sometimes people don't trust the AI or want to to be able to edit it. Uh, sometimes they tell us that some re generated reports have a lot of false positive and they don't want the, like which become really uh, not very helpful for them. So they'd like to review the results first and decide uh, maybe have a customizable report with the results that they want to report only and not like a one. There's no one size fits all um, uh, in that sense. Um, so yeah, we we try we try to to they could either review some of the results and the viewer, or they could uh, have the ready made uh, report, and that that really is something uh, customizable per site and per user. Maybe when you're first uh, kind of starting the process of working with a, a radiology team for the Norway tool, what are the types of questions that the radiologists might ask you? Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's a good question. There's all types of all types of questions. A lot of the time, they ask about whether they can edit the results or like be really be the 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 owner of of the AI algorithm output. Some because they they don't like something, especially if they're if it's a new tool, if they're not used to it. In the beginning, they really want to like validate it on their own and like be able to to edit like a. Or remove uh, uh, of the, some of the AI outputs. Uh, so they ask if they could edit the results. They ask if we could also automate reporting um, or, with, or integrate within their dictation system. And that's a feature that is very important, especially if you're if you want to to add efficiency um, to the radiologist workflow. So like how we can customize um, uh, the 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 automated like or pre 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 filled uh, report uh, how we can integrate with that workflow of course the time the time uh, of the results availability that which is a, a an important key as well um, and yeah and how we can customize or have flexible output um, for them can they edit the results <laughs> yes, of course they can. Uh, I mean, depending on, on, on what, what we're looking at here. Yeah. So for instance, in, in some of the stroke workflow where like they just want a yes, no question, there's no point in editing. They'd like, because they, ha they have to review and, and, and decide, they, they, are, they are the decision maker at the end of the day. The AI doesn't decide for them. It's more of a triage uh, algorithm. So there's nothing to edit really. Um, where, whereas when you're talking about like uh, lesion segmentation, then they are allowed to edit to remove uh, or to remove some of the, the, the mass that were generated by, by the AI. Uh, they could also edit the report. So instead of get, having a PDF report that's already ready-made, they could choose what they want to have in the report. Um, and that, that's how you edit the results in a sense. Mm. So what, what about the um, integration with their, their reporting system and then the, the time results? Yeah, so that's something that uh, we we uh, we do very well uh, in our because we've built it in other products uh, integration with the dictation system. So we integrate with with all of the dictation uh, vendors today. Uh, so we can auto we can set up, uh, for instance, some of the measurements of the, some of the findings to be automatically uh, filled in their report. So when they open their report, they already have the measurements, the values, and th that's something that they choose. So like. Uh, depending on the, their template, we can have the have the pre-filled uh, values there uh, already from the AI from the AI output. Um, so that's something that is really helpful to to uh, increase that uh, acquisition to report, uh, uh, increase the efficiency from acquisition to report. Those those are I guess really reasonable questions to have when they're uh, kind of first evaluating the product. Um, after they've mm -hmm. adopted neuro AI and you know maybe they're using some or all of the 
the, the modules on there. What are the, what's the type of things that you start talking about afterwards? Was that, you know, the feedback or the, the questions or the wish list? They, yeah. They, uh, yeah, definitely. And, and, and we know that like the product is never finished. It's never done. And the, the main point of making a product available is to keep improving it. We, 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 we value the, 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 radiologist feedback all the time because again we're building products for the radiologists so we want them to have their inputs and they're there so um as the first the, the initial the initial step is to get their to get their hands on it and then they would start giving us feedback and and as a an agile team we, we we address that feedback in a very timely manner we do, i mean we do our best to do it uh, and and grow our product and make it and make it as flexible um as, as it can be so that it would fit all the different needs because not not a single radiologist want to to have the same workflow as the other of course there are the main the main uh, I, how do you say the, the standards and then they they'd like to customize their workflows according to their prior experience or their their own their own um, knowledge so yeah we try to be uh, to be as flexible as possible. Um, what's an example of, I don't know how many health systems or your clients that you can kind of name. I know sometimes those relationships are um, yeah. or have different levels of openness about talking about um, their vendors, but are there any um, health systems that you can talk about who have adopted neuro AI and, and how they're using it? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can name them. I mean, we'll, we'll be communicating uh, a lot about them. So we'll be attending ASNR, so the American Society of Neurology, and we'll be, we'll be presenting some of the uh, experience from those health systems. So uh, basically uh, some of our, the UC systems here that, that work with us on, on these products. So they will, have, they, will have their, they will be presenting their experience with the product on, on the uh, uh, multiple sclerosis lesion detection and quantification and how it, it, it would improve their, their, um, uh, their uh, reading time or their, their uh, reduce the, inter, the, the subjectivity of reading such exams and make it more uh, standardized, make a, getting a standardized report of these uh, these patients, uh, and uh, on one side, on the other side, we'll also be covering uh, how the stroke um, uh, triage uh, helps uh, radiologists specifically. So we, because again, we're targeting radiologists. These are our main our main uh, uh, end users, and we, we try to empower them with the tools uh, we have. So the triage stroke triage algorithm for to help radiologists read faster and, and streamline um, uh, stroke care without uh, short shortcutting them. I noticed with your 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 stroke AI tool that it um, that it can it detect LVO and, and ICH. Uh, I guess with the same tool. Yes. And that's that's kind of unique, right? So yeah, I read, so on the strokes side of things, we do have four different uh, algorithms. So we have the LVO, ICH, uh, the uh, CT and MR perfusion, so both oh, yeah. with a single tool uh, with their automated quantification and the aspect score. So we do have, have a cover a large uh, variety of algorithm targeting the stroke patients. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, earlier about kind of like products never finished, which I think, you know, that goes for everything, but it, you know, especially goes for AI. Um, when you start thinking about the future radiology and kind of how artists can serve the future of radiology, what, what's that, that dual pathway? Yeah, that's a great question um, that we keep asking ourselves every day. Um, but yeah, the future, the future of arteries and how we can serve radiology, I think it's, it's really growing our platform. Uh, as we grew, grew our neuro AI platform, but growing the platform in general um, to, to serve, to provide value upstream and downstream. So from the interpretation experience. So either from the triage side, it could be from the reporting side, as we mentioned. Um, so all across the radiology workflow, it could be uh, population health, it could be more on the reconstruction side, more on the image quality side. So really adding AI where it, what, where, where it can automate or, uh, or uh, add efficiency in that complete journey. Um, 
And of we also, I think one one important aspect that we ignore when speaking about AI, uh, because we're not sitting next to a radiologist, is performance, performance of the platform. Uh, like AI accuracy, uh, it, 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 it's not only about AI accuracy and the clinical work from paper. It's really about how it functions in reality and all the non-functional requirements that are needed to make it a reality. Um, so we do like could be I don't know the number of clicks, the time to make the results available, uh, the ability to edit, as we mentioned, the ability to to customize uh, some reporting. Um, so all all of these uh, related to to things you don't see and uh, they do, that don't get shown uh, that don't get shown in the AI hype because we we kind of tend to forget about them these are the like things we need to focus on to be able to deliver on that promise yeah. right that sounds like your job <laughs> like it's it's the whole company's job yeah <laughs> okay, okay. The whole job. so <laughs> um well if one was to say like okay we're going to sit down and we are going to imp imp reduce some clicks out of this this radiologist practice for this particular pathology and exam um what's the what are the types of things that you do when you sit down and say okay we're gonna we're gonna try to make this process a little bit better like how would one do that yeah yeah so first you need to i don't want to give all the secrets okay. <laughs> well they have to um, get a phd in flow physics first so. <laughs> no i don't think it's related but uh, <laughs> clicks was not an issue in flow imaging um uh, so first, uh, you need, at least you need to sit down and, and observe how the radiologists do their job, right? Like you understand how, how, how they do it today and like avoid adding anything to that. So that like take, taking that as a baseline and, and trying to improve from that. And there's a lot of creative thinking, design thinking that needs to happen there. Um, of course, we work with our, with our UI UX designers, working with uh, radiologists again, testing a lot with them, working with our develop, developers as well from the product team, the sales team and marketing. It's, it's like really a, a like, a, whole city, uh, it, needs a, it needs a town. Um, uh, but yeah, like starting from a baseline and, and with design thinking, thinking how, how, how we can remove some of the clicks, how we can remove some of the uh, mouse um, journey on, on, on the screen, you know, instead of like putting panels all over the place, how can we consolidate them in a single place? How can we automate some, some of the, uh, like pre-fill something so that the, the the users doesn't have to go and click on every single thing so there's a lot of like design thinking like that and then on top of that wherever you can add ai to um uh, automate some measurements then it's even better it gets even better i imagine that um placing the the various uh modalities and pathologies all within the same platform probably uh is a good starting point too right exactly <laughs> so bravo to you um and I, I was actually planning on wrapping up on that future of radiology thing but then i got so excited about uh putting you in the hot seat for how to, how to fix the uh the, the work Number <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do thank you for coming in and i would say for you know the folks in the audience you know if you're a radiologist and you are um you know finding yourself going to different tools uh for your your neuro workflow or uh you know the press yeah, rule right. or all of the different uh, platforms that that our terrace has, I, th I think this is, I think it makes a ton of sense to me. Um, yeah. And and I, th I think what you're doing over there is really great. So so thank you for coming in. Thanks for all your hard work. Maya. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Thank you for all the questions that uh, you asked. They're, I mean, super important. I'm not, I don't claim to have the right answers to everything. It's very really, really an all reflection here. I think a lot of people are as well. So um, yeah, we try to contribute uh, as we can. Uh, well, well, wonderful. Um, I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll maybe I'll see you at one of those shows and um, yeah, stop by at the SNR if you're coming. All right, I definitely will. Um, and uh, thank you everybody for 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 viewing us today and have a wonderful day. Thank you.